Giovanni, thank you very much uh, for uh, pulling this meeting uh, together and having such great representation from around the world of all different types of carriers so that we really begin uh, uh, looking uh, afresh uh, at international aviation security standards, uh, how we are implementing them, and what we need to do from an operational standpoint, recognizing uh, that government and the carriers themselves are working together uh, and need to work together to continue uh, to improve the, the air environment. Um, as uh, Giovanni just uh, referenced, uh, yesterday I was in Spain uh, meeting with uh, the EU Justice and Home Affairs Ministers. Uh, there uh, we reached a consensus on a way forward to strengthen international, uh, our international aviation uh, system uh, with respect to information sharing, uh, with respect to best practices uh, sharing, with respect to investment in science and technology, with respect to uh, increasing international aviation standards, and with respect to uh, providing technical assistance and other types of assistance uh, throughout the globe, not, not just within one country or the other, recognizing that the international aviation system is global in nature. Uh, and that a traveler who gains access to it at any one point potentially can have access to the entire system. Uh, and that is why it was so essential to leave that consensus with the EU and come uh, right to IATA, uh, which represents uh, airlines uh, in countries uh, around the world, and they had uh, presentations from around the world. I will leave here uh, to meet with uh, the head of ICAO, which is the UN uh, aviation uh, body, uh, because the United States' uh, view uh, is that we must move globally, we must move internationally, we must move government and private sector, uh, and we must uh, move as an international community of responsible nations to deal with the th any threats to aviation security. Um, immediately after uh, the December 25th attack on Flight 253, uh, we recognized that this was an international incident. It may have been a flight to the United States, uh, but it was a flight that originated abroad uh, in Amsterdam. The passenger apps had actually started in, in Nigeria. Uh, and there were passengers from 17 countries on that flight uh, who would have perished uh, had Umar Farouk's attempt been successful. Uh, an international incident merits an international response, and at least four areas. One, information collection and analysis. Two, information sharing and collaboration and passenger vetting. Three, international security standards. And four, development and deployment of information and screening technology. Uh, I was with uh, my EU colleagues yesterday. I'm here with the private sector today. I've met with the U.S. flag carriers uh, already, uh, and uh, we have uh, invitations now uh, in Abuja, Nigeria, uh, to meet at, at the African regional level under the auspices of ICAO to discuss these issues. We have meetings set uh, forth uh, for the Western Hemisphere that will occur in, in Mexico City, be co-hosted by Mexico and Brazil, uh, and we are uh, moving forward uh, internationally, globally, uh, all working together to make sure that uh, we have one, one consensus, one number one standard, one number one goal, and that is the safety of any air passenger uh, from whatever place their flight originates to whatever destination it is intended. Uh, so with that, I think uh, we're both uh, uh, pleased to take questions.